All right, guys. So the next topic that we have for you guys is the 2020 presidential race. It's getting very close to November. The weeks are flying by. The months are flying by. And Trump and and Biden are going to be representing the Democrat and the Republicans. Obviously, Trump is the president looking to get reelected. And there's a lot of turmoil in the country with voters being stuck trying to pick which one of the lesser evil they would like to pick in a lot of people's eyes. Some people like Trump, some people like Biden, and a lot of other Americans are right there in the middle where it's like, I don't like either of them. I don't know who I want to vote for. So I want to go ahead and start this off with you, Franco. And I want to ask, what would you say would be a viable third option if somebody wanted to not vote for either of these guys? Or, or what, would, what would be the course of action if they didn't like either of them? Even if they didn't want to vote for a third person, what would you say? I think that's the better question. What is the course of action that somebody should take if they're in that that limbo right there in the middle? Uh, I would tell them to stop relying only on the electoral process for installing change. Uh, because, like, where has voting lesser of two evils gotten us? Like, it's still you're still voting for evil. You're still voting for people who are going to serve the corporations. And throughout... The course of history, the corporations have gotten stronger and stronger, more powerful, and the people have gotten more poor. Um, and usually I would say like voting for third party, but in this election, both third party options, the Libertarian and the Green Party, they suck. Uh, there's a lot of corruption that happened with the Green Party, and I covered that in my channel, Frank Analysis. Joe Jorgensen, I don't really... For that video. As a, I don't really like the Libertarian candidate because of comments that she made about Tulsi Gabbard. And she also... The Libertarians don't put climate change on the forefront, which is something that's really important to me. And I think it should be really important to everyone. Um, but what are some other things that you could do to install change? We can become, we can become informed about the systemic problems of our country. Like... You can get informed by listening to the political channels. Like you can listen to us, hear me out. You can listen to Frank Analysis. You can also listen to some of the other bigger channels like uh, Nico House and the MCSC Network, The Combo Couch, Jimmy Dore, uh, Kyle Kalinske, A Secular Talk. And then inform your family members about what's actually happening. You can also get on the ground to these protests that are happening. There's millions of protests that are happening around the country. You can start community organizing. You can you can you can uh, tell your community and inform them about what's happening and saying that we won't stand for this. We're sick and tired of giving two shitty options every election year, and then we see no progress. So that would be my advice to people, um, and then to also get informed about local candidates, because if you have more power to install progressive change if you vote for candidates locally that are not taking corporate money and who are fighting for issues that you're concerned about. And then that can lead to a domino effect. People from another state or another city are gonna hear, oh, did you hear about what they did over there in Montgomery County, Maryland? We should probably do that too. Oh, Colorado got marijuana legalized. Maybe we should get marijuana legalized in our state. So that's the importance of not just worrying only on the presidential election, but you have to also worry about other elections that are happening in your local uh, communities in your state, etc. I like that you mentioned that. Um, something that I've definitely come to come to learn during these times is that we need to start locally because we can get things done. Our we can push for more things to be done locally, and that's really where the change is going to start. If it's going to make its way up, it needs to become a trend in everybody's local areas. I want to ask you, Brooks, the same question. What would you tell somebody who's in the middle of that Biden Trump? What would you give somebody, or what would you tell somebody if you had to give them advice for their next course of action? Um, I mean, just what you guys have been saying, make sure you research your local candidates, research the people that you identify the most with who, you know, they talk about the things that you care about the most. You know, if you care about something like defunding the police and, and getting money out of the politics, you know that's not gonna happen with either of the, of the presidential candidates, but you can look down the line for someone, you know, third party, fourth party, whatever it may be, locally, 
that can try to get these things out out of the politics because that's what's really hurting us right now is people we, we expect these this money to go to corporations and they're going to do the right thing and we know they're not going to every single time you know and, and it's something that Nico talks about every every time we link up on, on Skype you know you're the hero of your own story so don't rely on somebody else wait who says that story. Franco oh oh Franco said, I thought you said Nico says that I was like wait what we had Nico on Skype when <laughs> no Franco I had Nico on Skype but I do say you're like you you are the hero of your own story because I see a lot of people talking about like they're like, oh, we're gonna get get progressives in 2024. Why don't you start working for progressive change now? Stop relying and expecting other people to do that for you in four years. Look at what happened. Look, that should be a lesson you should learn of how a lot of people they just like were waiting for 2020 to happen to get like I don't know like a Bernie Sanders president so that we can get the things that we want. We can get we can get progressive policies passed in other ways other than get, electing. A progressive president. Yeah. So I'll, I'll take it back to uh, what we were talking about maybe two, three days ago, and um, or you know, it was longer than that. But you know, we have a group chat with uh, with the four of us, and then and Bruno and and Brenda and all them, and we're talking about just um, you know, voting in people that register and, and identify with what we care about. And that's what we have to do. We have to get rid of the old guard, people like Nancy Pelosi. Biden, whoever it may be, people that care more about the status quo and their own money than the actual people. You know, why should we vote for you if you're not gonna do your job and look out for the citizens? You know, so let yeah, me ask you a question, bro. That's, that's like rewarding them for bad behavior. Let yeah, me ask you a question. I want to ask you guys yeah. a question too. Oh my bad. Yeah, we're all talking right now. All right, so I'll go ahead. You ask him a question. I'm gonna ask him a question right after that because I got a good one for you guys. I want to hear your opinion. I'll let you go first though. What's your question? So we've been more involved this year than any other year with politics. No and doubt. Going on the ground and and aren't isn't it fun? Like despite how stressful like these corporations and you know the the politicians get paid for them make our lives you know so difficult and so stressful isn't going out to these protests and realizing that you're not alone and that you're fighting for something isn't that something that's so fun it's like informing people too and meeting people like that like whether it be like at these uh protests at our local high school here at northwood high school or going to dc like don't you find it fun doing that? Yeah, very, it's very empowering to see. And it's not even just like people in real life. It's people that you meet online and all that too. Like we have Pierce. Pierce on here before. Yeah. We've talked multiple times with him about mm-hmm. class stuff and race stuff as well. So oh, dude, yep. a lot of people that you identify with are out there. So it's just a matter of finding a way to um, get together with them and, and talk about these things and you know break bread with people because that's how you help change the world and all that. Well said, man. I wanted to ask you guys this question, though, and I'll start with you, Brooks, on this one. How much of a factor has social media been in kind of changing the way politics are and, like, the way narratives and conversations are had? Like, how much of an effect, if if any, do you think it's had on, you know, just narratives and conversations in politics? Yeah, that's so, a great question. So you see it every day. You know, you, you scroll on Twitter and you say, I was today years old when I learned this side yeah. of the third you know like yeah. twitter youtube uh instagram whatever it may be you learn something new every day literally you i you know you find out about you know let's say something happened overseas that 10 years ago five years ago that you had no idea about you know something terrible that they don't want you to see you know mm-hmm. it's not it's not going to be covered by the fox or cnn or msnbc or the public where- education system either yeah, you know, like, it's, it's just a matter of, like, doing your own research and, and then finding out your own things. You know, uh, Michelle, like, I was I was just watching a secular talk video earlier today, and Michelle Obama and Barack Obama were blaming people our age for being so um, demarginalized from politics because, you know, they're talking about, you know, it's not marketed correctly and, you know, people are just not distrusting, or they are distrusting of politics. And I think it's because we're so aware of everything that's going on, so we don't want to just 
be blinded by everything. Like we know things are messed up, and we're not gonna just we're not we're not just gonna trust empty words. Hold on for one sec. Go for it. Go for it. Lucy's probably tearing couch up or some shit. <laughs> but Franco, man, same question for you. How how much of a of an impact has it had on political narratives? It's had a big impact because before the internet, people just believed whatever cable news told them,、um, and you know some people were critical critical thinkers based off of that, but they weren't able to share information as much as you see it happening now with the internet.、Uh, like even me, like people who I've never met in person, I'm having a conversation with people,、um, and either they're on my side or on another side, and then they share an article that I hadn't seen. And then I find out more stuff that about you know whatever it is that we were talking about.、Mm-hmm. There's so much information now that can be shared on social media platforms, and the oligarchs are very afraid of that, which is why a lot of them are really pushing for censoring things on the internet now. Forgive my、YouTube. ignorance. The ol- the oligarchs are are what are what does that mean? The oligarchs are the people who choose who comes into power. So in the arc in in there's a Princeton study that was done in the U S that found that the U S has more of an oligarchy. That means that people in power get to choose other people to、uh, come into power、um, rather than a real democracy in which、gotcha. the entire popul- population is like what you saw what happened in 2016 when you know Bernie Sanders got screwed. Out of out of the primaries, and then, and and was delivered to Hillary, who ended up losing. Yeah, it's like that one club that just has all that money and power gets to choose who we have as our leader. They have more power to choose who we have as our leader than the actual people do, and they also have the power to control the narrative. So like, we can like fact check people on our own. Like we don't need like these like fact checking,、um, like. These fact-checking like、uh, organizations, because you know those are run by people too. Who's going to fact、uh, fact-check the fact-checkers? Like, yeah, who's going, true. Who's going to watch the Watchmen, right? Yeah. So that's a that's an interesting perspective that you guys share on the whole social media thing because it really became prominent in the 2010s, and、uh, we've only had two presidents since then. We're starting to learn more as things come out. And another thing that I've noticed about social media that is kind of、uh, troubling is we also do have the side of the social media where it's like people pretend to care or just go on there to spread hate.、Uh, do you think that? Do you guys think that that has an impact in the way people think, or do you think that's just something that's easy for most people to ignore? What do you think, Brooks? I mean, for me personally, I'm not gonna if I. And, and maybe it's bad for me to do this, but like if, if I agree with if I don't dis if I don't agree with what you're saying, I'm simply gonna scroll past you. I'm gonna look at it with like, the hell are you talking about? You know, I don't wanna I don't wanna read something about that. But you know, I I found that over this pandemic and and being home all the time that sometimes I take the time to read these things. I'm still gonna disagree with it, right? But you know, understanding another point of view is important.、Um, but As far as the hate stuff goes, like that's that's social media for you. You know, you get you have Facebook and people are spreading propaganda all there on there all the time, and you have normally very intelligent people just blindly listening to these things, you know, and then they end up spreading it, and, and it becomes like a wildfire, and that's not what you need right now.、Mm-hmm. And any like we want people to be cynical and all that, and and think beyond just like the surface level stuff. But you know, you gotta be able to be reasonable and look at things like. If I see something on Facebook, I'm always gonna look at those, like look at the about.